Hi, I'm Randall from Walker Technical Company. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Walker Console Controller. Right now we're going to talk about how to hook up a MIDI module or sound module to the console. Then we're going to be talking about how to use it and how to play it. First thing we need to do is hook it up to the connection panel on the console. So let's do that right now. Take your MIDI in plug from your device and plug it into the MIDI out jack. Then take the MIDI out plug and plug it into the MIDI in jack. Then get your audio cables from your device, take the plugs and plug them into the audio L jack and the audio R jack. After your cables are hooked up to the console, if you haven't already hooked up your MIDI sound module, you can do so now. In this case, I'm going to be using an iPad as my sound module. First thing you'll want to do is hook up the audio input jack. Then the next thing you'll want to do in this particular case is use the lightning port for my iConnect MIDI. Turn on the iPad, open up your MIDI sound module. In this case, I'm going to be using the Roland Sound Canvas software. Turn the organ on, log into your account, and you should be ready to use your sound module. To set up a MIDI piston, press set, then the MIDI piston. That'll bring you to the MIDI piston setup. Here we say, see that it says MIDI swell A setup. And the first item there is set to key patch. What that is is a quick way of selecting your patch. You can hit set and then hit a key and it'll change the patch based upon the key that you hit. In this case, I've selected the string ensemble. Or I already know that the bottom C here will give me a grand piano. Alternatively, you can go on to the next uh, menu item down below called patch. Let's go into there. The first item is patch number, in which I can select that, and I can actually see the patch names down below. The patch names below are from the general MIDI standard and may not reflect your MIDI module, but in this case, the Roland Sound Canvas I'm using is using general MIDI. Below that is the octave offset. You can set whether it's uh, unity, one octave below, one octave above, or anywhere in between all the way down to negative three to positive three octaves. The next is MIDI MSB, MIDI Bank MSB, and MIDI Bank LSB. Refer to your user manual of your sound module to know which bank select that will do. Each device is different, so you will need to refer to that user manual to know what sound you're going to actually get. After that, you have amplitude. Within amplitude, you can define what your expression shoes are going to do. You can either have them do nothing. In this case, I have the shoe function set as off. Or you can set it to adjust the volume of the MIDI sound or the velocity. The difference between velocity and volume is that oftentimes samples will become more bright or change their character with a higher velocity, whereas volume will just simply change the volume of the patch. Down below that is the minimum velocity. This is useful if you don't want basically a velocity sensitive keyboard. In this case, this organ has velocity sensitive keyboards, so if I hit a key very softly, I will get a very soft sound. If I hit it hard, I'll get a louder sound. Um, if I want the louder sound all the time, I can simply dial up the minimum velocity to 127. That way, no matter how slowly I hit it, it sounds at its loudest volume or its highest velocity at all times. Below that is your volume scaling. Perhaps you have already a combination or registration that you like, and you'd like to mix in either some strings or a piano with that, but the volume is too loud or too soft. You can use volume scaling to adjust that. In this case, it's relatively quiet at 80%, and I might want it louder. So let's dial it all the way up to 100%, and you can see the volume scales. So now it'll blend with your registration choices. When you're all finished, you can hit canceled back out of that. 
The last menu item is routing. We can take a look at that. The first thing is a bit of information. It tells you which MIDI channel this keyboard with this MIDI piston will transmit on. In this case, Swell MIDI A is going to transmit on MIDI channel one. Depending upon your organ, it will have various numbers of MIDI channels. There are a total of 16 MIDI channels available, so there should be enough MIDI channels for pretty much every organ installation. Down below that is your MIDI port. In this case, you can talk to different MIDI modules, and this allows you to direct each piston button which MIDI module you want to talk to. I have one here locally, which is a Roland, Roland Sound Canvas software running on the iPad, or I have a Roland remotely mounted in the amplifier rack. I can select this one, the Roland Sound Canvas, or if I move my selection down to the Roland, now I'm talking to the Roland in the amplifier rack. You can hear the samples change, and it's talking to a different MIDI module now. Let's leave it on local. Uh, when I'm all finished, I can cancel out of that. The last menu item is save as default. If I like how it's set up and I'm talking to the local port that I want to talk to all the time, I can set this as the default for power on when you turn on the organ. Once I have all my settings set up, I can add that setting to a general for recalling it later. So if I want to add this exact setup to general six, I simply hit six or set and then six. Now all those settings have been saved to swell MIDI A on general six. So if I hit general cancel, I can hit general one and I've preset that one to be a grand piano. Playing locally. General two is also piano, but it's playing remotely. General three is then strings. And as we set up already, general six is back to the grand piano. As you can see, for each general that I press, the MIDI piston reconfigures itself how I had set it on that general. It's very flexible to use, and you can do an awful lot with it. I hope you enjoy that. Thank you so much for watching.